So Chuck, I never give you a chance to ask me a question for one of our explainers. Anything been eating you lately? Well, I mean, since since you ask, how about because this is something you hear all the time, especially in jokes, believe it or not. Really? Sh yeah. Schrodinger's cat. Wait a minute, you have a quantum division of the joke department? <laughs> well, I don't think that the comedians know what Schrodinger's cat is, but okay. it's such a uh it's such a ubiquitous reference yeah, that they make yeah. reference to it a lot of times. It's interculture. It's interpop it's, culture. It has yeah. interculture. I don't know why they don't call it Schrodinger's dog. <laughs> okay. You all know. right. So all right. So it, it dates back to Irwin Schrodinger. Irwin. Uh, who Irwin, yes. And he was a physicist. But right. They're all won Nobel Prizes, all these people who contributed to our understanding of the quantum. Right. Uh, and quantum mechanics is what it's officially called, but I like just calling it quantum physics because it's an entire branch of physics that right. deals with the small small things in the universe. Uh, all that so is small. So you do sweat the small stuff. Yes, you do. <laughs> mm, I see. Precisely. I see. Precisely. And uh, the uh, Schrodinger's cat relates a little bit to what people have called the observer effect. Uh -huh. Okay, where if you observe something, you change it. So I can respond to both of those in the same in the same pop, if you allow me. Okay. okay? So let, let's do the observer effect for the moment. So it's unfortunate that somebody called it the observer effect because then new age folk and other people who are basically scientifically illiterate were thinking it's your consciousness that affects what you're observing. Dude. And oh my gosh, con there's a consciousness field and they go running off in a, you know, off the cliff. See, we're what you don't understand is that like particles <laughs> are totally alive, okay? <laughs> And the reason why there is a collective consciousness in the universe is because, like, all of these particles that are spinning, what they're actually doing is conducting thought and consciousness. It's, they're thinking. They're thinking. They're thinking, <laughs> man. Rocks think. Trees think. Yeah, yeah. More than rocks. Right. So uh, let, me, let me cut through all of that and simply say that you're sitting there and I can see you because, right. in fact, you're illuminated by if not sunlight through an open window, uh, an uncurtained window, but artificial light within the room, all right? That light hits your face, bounces off your face, goes through the computing system, and I see you, okay? That light carries energy. Every photon of light that strikes your face carries energy. Mm. And then they, they, most of them reflect Others uh, get absorbed. Actually, it depends on how dark your skin is. Skin right. is very dark. It'll absorb most of them. If you have That's very... because, you know, photons, they want to be a part of this, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some. They, oh, <laughs> Let me get oh some I, see where we're I see where we're landing. Mm. Oh, we got, ooh, we got some good chocolate happening <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just a... To be more precise about Chuck's <laughs> excursion there, uh, darker skinned people absorb more sunlight than lighter skinned people, and it's your albedo. It's a it's the percentage of incident energy that you absorb relative to what you reflect. Very important calculation for the Earth, because what Earth absorbs drives our climate, That's whereas right. what Earth reflects back to space just goes back to space right. from, from the sun. And so glaciers reflect light, cloud tops reflect light, Oceans reflect light, that sort of thing. So, uh, so for climate change to solve it, we just need to get a bunch of white people in one place. <laughs> just reflect the light to reduce the... Do us a favor, guys. Sunbathe. Everybody just sunbathe right here. Reflect out the sun. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. I had to do it, man. All right. Don't write. Don't write. Don't write. But it was okay. good. That was that was funny. Yeah, that was, exactly. that was a good one. Yeah, I, I mean, if you if the Earth is getting hot, you just just um, increase its albedo to increase the reflectance of it. So right. Yeah. So uh, instead of Chuck's solution, everyone could just wear white clothing, and that would true, work true. E even better. Right. Uh, That's more so, inclusive. I'll give it. To you. <laughs> That's more inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> the DEI the, the authorities will tell you, you that's how you do that on the campus. Uh, so so here's the thing. If I made you tinier and tinier and tinier, right. so you're no longer a macroscopic human, you're a microscopic particle. 
there's a particle size below which when you open the curtains and shine light on you, that light will hit you and pop you into another location. So I'm smaller than the photon? Than the, what the, your, or what it, your, your capacity to move to a different state of existence, that the energy that, that is required to make that happen, correct, oh, got it. is it's now energy. the same as the energy of the light that's hitting you. Gotcha. So you hit me with in order a ray to see, beam. In order to see you. Right. And then you pop somewhere else. And I say, where'd you go? Right. What so, are you doing? So am I there? Am I not there? Well, we'll never really know because you're hitting me with something that makes me not there once you're exposing me to it. Correct. And, and since it happens on the moment you're exposed... Right. Not the moment I see you. Right. I will never know what you were doing. Exactly. Okay. If you're small enough for that light energy to to affect you in that way, so that's why we don't think about this in everyday life because we're too big for light to pop us into other states of existence. Exactly. But particles, electrons, atoms, nuke, all of this, it happens all the time. And this was a very disturbing discovery in the 1920s. We're in the centennial decade of the discovery of quantum physics in the 1920s. Because you discover this, I wanna see what you're doing. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna let me see what you're doing. Because the light I shine on you in order to see it is, so So it's really, uh, it's not so much an observer effect, it's right. a measurement effect. Exactly. Okay, get right. the human brain out, it's just a d device right. to measure you, you you can't know it. Okay. Right. right. So, so, let's get on to, so it has nothing to do with consciousness. So let's get on to Schrodinger's cat. By the way, it's from an era where people spoke lightly of doing bad things to cats, okay? Oh, no, Peter. So, you know, yeah, but Peter wasn't around. So, so I'm a little disturbed that they picked cats, right? They could have picked dogs, they could have picked worms, but cats are lovable and will fit in a box, right? Um, and so, because cat house cats don't come as large as house dogs do. Just think right. that through, okay? Right. <laughs> that, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, a box for a dog is called your living room. <laughs> right, right. So here's what happens. You say to yourself, um, you put a cat in a box, and if the cat is a quantum cat with two states, states of existence, it's either dead or alive. While it's in the box, you have no idea which it is. And so the way we describe this in quantum physics, if you do the experiments... Okay, so some percentage of the time you open the box, the cat will be alive. Others, the cat will be dead. And so you, what we say is that the, the cat's existence is a superposition of being dead and being alive. I got you. It's a superposition of those two states. Because and it's in the box. It's in the box and you're not looking at it. And you're not looking at it. And that's why the superposition uh, exists. Co correct. And it's a quantum cat. Not right. a macroscopic it's not cat. A, it's, not a, it's not Maru, the internet cat <laughs> that, that people love to see jump out of a box. Okay, all right. Right, it's a hypothetical quantum cat. By the way, do you know cats on the internet uh, took a steep rise the same year that Cats on Broadway closed? The, the musical? Really? Yes, check your data on that. That is a weird little so fact. So we need somebody, we need somebody to investigate that because where did those cats go is what <laughs> So it was like 1990, you know, early internet, you know, uh, and Cats closes on Broadway. And so I think people needed their cat fix and it landed on the internet. Landed but anyhow, internet. so here we go. Now, the superposition, de the details of that experiment are more, are more intricate than, than what I'm describing to you. Because what they wanted was to have like a, uh, something that's radioactive that would decay. And then that would then trigger a, a gate that would open the box you know, it's a little more Rube Goldbergian than what I'm describing. But just to be clear, if you don't look in the box, you do not know if the cat is alive or dead. So the Schrodinger's cat is, you're talking about something that you don't know about until you actually investigate it. And it's then the you'll end know about of the it. movie Seven. I didn't see that. That was a movie that came out many years ago with Morgan Freeman and the beautiful man. I forget his name. Oh, God. He's, uh, he did 12 Monkeys. He's done uh, Thelma and Louise. What's his name? Brad Pitt. Thank oh, you. Oh, Brad Pitt, of course. Okay. Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. So Brad Pitt is stalking a serial killer 
who is looking, who is using the seven deadly sins to kill people. Long story short, the last murder, he puts the head of someone in the box. And Brad Pitt wants to know what's in the box. And Morgan Freeman says, don't look in the box. There's no reason for you to look in this box. And Brad Pitt goes, what's in the box? Because he knows that it's his wife's head. That is completely but, morbid. Like, what? what, what? <laughs> I know, but it's perfect. It should be called Schrodinger's cat. It should be okay. called Brad Pitt's wife's wife's head. <laughs> and, Chuck, that is the most morbid analogy to this example I have ever heard. Oh, oh, because a dead cat is perfectly okay. fine. Oh no, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this actually, in a way, applies to quantum computing, which you might have okay. heard snippets about or yeah. at least bits of headlines that are uh, making the news. So if we think of regular computing is like a zeros and ones, right. bits, right? And all calculations are done in this way. Well, quantum computing, the a, a bit, a quantum bit, otherwise known as a qubit, can be either a zero or a one, Ooh. or anything in between. Okay. It could be 80% one, 20% zero, 50-50, 80% zero, 20% one, or anything on that continuum. And so, so the qubit has more computational versatility than a regular bit that can only be either a zero or a one. And and the and the when I say you can be anywhere between a zero and one, statistically, you can have that bit represent 80% ones, 20% zeros, uh, 50, it can be any combination of those two in the service of the programming that you're introducing to the computer. Holy so crap. all of that, Schrodinger's cat, your uh, dead wife's head in a box right. from this morbid movie that now I'm never gonna see. Um, <laughs> so, What's you, were so, in the box? You, you were so excited about it too. Because you know? it's so much better than Schrodinger's cat. Okay. It actually represents something that is consequential that, you know, I mean, never mind. It doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it doesn't make any difference when, once you're in the quantum. It doesn't make a difference. But it's just a much cooler reference. Right, right. Because it's not a quantum head. It's not right? a quantum head. So right. it doesn't make a difference. You know, once you're in the quantum, it's not a, it's not a cat. It's a quantum cat. And it's not a head. It's a quantum head. So, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I see what you're saying. It was never really a cat to begin with. Right. It was a fictional quantum cat. In exactly. the same way, it's a, a, it's a quantum head. Exactly. Oh, exactly. The world according to Chuck. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so funny. You're like, Chuck, uh, go have another bowl and get back to me. <laughs> so, Chuck, there it is. That's like, you know, Schrodinger's cat 101. He could have called it Schrodinger's coin. Is it heads he or tails? Have. Right. Right. Exactly. It's just, yeah. it, it, is this, is the quantum state only have two possibilities right. in that description? And right. so once you open the box. And, and thereby gain access to information that is otherwise hidden from any observer or any uh, device that would make the measurement. Coin is actually the best representation since if it's a superposition, like we said, or like you said, like I said, right? <laughs> please. <laughs> look at me taking look, me, look at me taking credit for quantum discoveries. No. However, that means it's always a probability. So yeah, it would be a probability, correct. It's always a probability. So that means quantum coin is actually, you came up with the best one. Why do, Why you got to do that? Why you got to best me? Well, I come up with a head in the box, and then you, <laughs> and then you still the got to You still got to outdo me. <laughs> really? We, really, we can't bro? Leave, come on. We can't leave our fans with a head in a box <laughs> version of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and just to be clear, the, the quantum state doesn't have to be one or the other. Right. It depends on the atom and all the circumstances, but it right. can be any number of different states that each have a probability of being true. Exactly. And That's in fact, the wave function of the particle extends outside of the box. Oh. So the probability drops rapidly across the border of the box, but it still exists in a little bit outside the box. So... What's inside the box has a probability of spontaneously 
disappearing from inside the box and appearing outside the box that's called tunneling. And it does that instantaneously, like faster than the speed of light. Another spooky, freaky thing in quantum physics. And wow. that relates in part to quantum entanglement because you can have two different particles whose wave functions interact on a way that where you do something to one particle, the other one knows about it instantly because their wave functions communicate. This is quantum 101. It's like Man, fun, fun parts of quantum. That yeah. is a lot it's of It's crazy. Fun. So we should do a lot of these about quantum physics. This was yeah. like an overview. I could spend a whole explainer on each one of these things because this is the decade. In the 1920s, it was a watershed decade in physics where Hubble discovers that we that the Milky Way is not the only galaxy. There are other island universes, they were called. Um, in, in Andromeda is another galaxy containing 400 billion stars. And four years... Three years later, in, two, in 1929, he discovers that the universe is expanding and we apply Einstein's relativity to show that we've got possibly a big bang, which would later would make 50 years before we had the supporting data. And most of what we now know, understand and love about quantum physics was discovered in the 1920s. And we knew all of that before the neutron was discovered. And before Texas Instrument actually made a calculator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Because that means these guys had to work that math oh, out I on see what their you're own. Okay, before anybody made a calculator. Right, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, by the way, I had a friend who had the very first Texas Instruments scientific calculator. And he knew it was the first because it didn't even have a model number on it. Wow. It predated model. It would ultimately become the TI-35. But we, I remember we all crowded around it, staring at it. It was this, one of those moments that you never forget. Okay, I just love the visual of a bunch of nerds crowded around. <laughs> and then, you know, you think they're looking at a magazine or something. Oh, some and then you part the ways and they're all around a calculator like, whoa. <laughs> look at that. Can you believe this thing? Welcome do, to the geek the, the geekiverse. There do the cosign. Is. Do the cosign again. <laughs> <laughs> Not a tangent man myself. Right? <laughs> so I right, Chuck, we got to call it quits there. All we right. Ran over the clock on this one. Okay. But the quantum physics deserve the few extra minutes we gave it, I think. Absolutely. All right. All right. Till next time. This has been a Star Talk explainer just for you. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>